Hello dear friends, welcome to another video of the never do through the GUI what you can do through the CLI. I am Vangelis Prokopiou and today you are watching Rust U interfacing with JS libraries. First of all, let me enable my very beautiful face for you to be able to see me. And uh, <clears throat> yeah, my first comment is that um, I announced an FFI series indeed, but um, this uh, kind of uh, got some priority because I'm currently looking into this uh, because we are uh, with some friends evaluating uh, the Rust U framework in order to use it somewhere and uh, we want to establish some things before we indeed proceed to use it. And this is one aspect that uh, we had to look into uh, and the aspect is how Rust U interfaces with uh, existing JS libraries. So if you don't already know what U is, U is uh, a Rust framework for creating reliable and efficient web applications, as you can see here. It is uh, a quite well-known framework within the Rust community and it uh, compiles to WASM. So you have uh, the type safety plus um, the um, efficiency that WASM uh, provides compared to JavaScript. <coughs> uh, so yeah, this is a, a very short introduction to you. There are enough resources already online and on YouTube about how to create a new application, etc. So if you are interested in it, in it, you can check it out yourselves. <clears throat> but our specific uh, point of view is, as I said, interfacing with JS libraries. So we will uh, come quickly here to the application. This is the application. <clears throat> I know that the UX will not win uh, any um, any prizes currently, uh, but the UI is not what we care about currently. So what we have to check here is that everything we see here, apart from this counter, which is a native, uh, let's say, component, all the other stuff here are uh, funct is functionality that comes from JS libraries, not from the Rust U application itself. So as you can see here, we have <coughs> an ISO date. If I refresh the application, you can see that it changes. Here we have a class with some data in it. And here we have a UUID here at, the, at the, the, uh, the bottom. If I refresh the application, you see that this changes and the date also changes. So let's uh, check out the setup. <coughs> As you can see, I write here that <coughs> the following date comes from jslibajs through source jslibajs.rs. So we have a libajs file. So let's check that out. We have a jslib.ajs file. This is our library. <clears throat> it exports a function and it exports a class. And now our uh, thing is to import this into our U Rust application and use it. So if we check here, we s I say that it is used through source js lib a dot rs so let's check this file source js lib a dot rs so this is the bindings let's say file to the js library <clears throat> this is how we can uh, hook up a module let's say uh, by the way, this information uh, can be found in the WASM bindgen guide, as you can see. <clears throat> this information uh, 
uh, is included here importing functions from JS. This is the main uh, file that this is the main page, let's say, that uh, will be of great interest to you if you want to achieve something uh, similar. So in essence, what we have there is the equivalent of this example. And another page that it is very useful, will be very useful to you, is this one, explore the full list of ways to configure imports. These two things, plus the whole guide, of course, is something that you must uh, have a look at in order to achieve this functionality. So coming back to our uh, initial module, this is, in essence, as I said, the example from the docs themselves. So we just uh, output uh, this, um, let me just give me a minute. I will split it in order for them to be visible side, side by side. So this is the Rust module, the Rust application, and this is the JS library. So as you can see, the mapping is quite straightforward. We import the module and uh, then we uh, import, let's say, the function. This is the function which uses the data API of JavaScript. And then down here is this class. So this is how we define the, the class. And we use these uh, attributes of was binding gen, constructor, method, etc., etc., in order to bind to the respective. Um, methods of the class. So the constructor, as you can see here, it maps to the new function that is used as a convention in Rust. Uh, the get number, which is a getter, method getter, etc, etc. So this is quite straightforward, as you can see. But there is one caveat. And what is that? Uh, let me not here. Let's quickly check if we can find it here or I will um, give me a minute because I think it is quite important. Module. Here we are. This is uh, No. Anyway, I don't think I can find it now. I should have uh, looked it up earlier. Anyway, the problem is when we want to, as you can see, let's say that this is a top level module because it itself exports uh, some objects, a function, a class, etc. So it does not import stuff from other modules, from other files. And this is important because if we have multi-level imports and exports, unfortunately, currently the WASM bind gen uh, tool cannot handle that for now. According to the docs, maybe this restriction will be removed in the future. But currently the status is that we cannot have multi-level imports. So we cannot have, let's say, a node module and just import it or export it through a wrapper, etc., and use it. So things become a little bit more complicated. So how do, do we resolve that? Uh, we will check it right now. And uh, this is the second example. Basically, if you check here, if we see what uh, we do here, let me also open the component where we use all, th all this functionality. So we use it in this main component. So as you can see here, we get our ISO date, ISO date from the from Rust, of course, from the U component, which under the hood calls the JS library here. So we get our ISO date, and this is where we print it, and this maps to this div, let's say, as you can see. Then we have the class, 
and how we use the class is like this. We create the class. We get the number. As you can see, if you see the mappings here with the new function which maps to the constructor, we create our class with uh, the argument that it needs. Then we get the number. So this is the getter, as you can see, my class number. We set the number with the setter. We get the number again, and then we call the render function here, which calls into this, as you can see. So, and the result is the initial number, the 10 that we provide, then we update, we set to 20, and then we call the render function, which uh, gives us this. My number is 20. As you can see, my number is, and the number. And we use it in here. As you can see. So quite straightforward. And now we come to the second, um, let's say, case where we have a, a module, a node module, let's say, or a, a JS library, which consists of many files and multi exports. As I said, this is not currently supported. And in order for me to show you what I mean, uh, I have the package.json here. And uh, as you can see, I have the UUID library. I will not install. Uh, yeah, let's install it. npm install. Okay, now we must have it here. So we have the node modules, and let's visit it in the browser. npm uuid. And let's see how we use it, as you can see here. This is how we can use the UUID library or this way, etc. Now, the problem though is that we import from UUID, we can import from UUID, and if we check, uh, let's say, the setup, you will see that uh, uh, this is, let's say, the starter point, the, in, the initial point, and it uh, requires a UUID bin. <clears throat> and if we open the UUID bin, where is it? Uh, UUID, uh, here it is. If we open this, it defines some things, etc. And if we follow, let's say, the structure of the project, if I remember correctly, this is where we come to this wrapper uh, MJS, which exports all of our functions, all the functions that we want. And it imports the functionality from the dist index.js. So we have an import here. And then we have our exports here. This is the exports that we can uh, bind to the Rust U application. But unfortunately, we have this import. And as we said, this import is not supported. We cannot have an import statement in our JS module that we bind to Rust and U. So we have a problem here. And this is our index file just for uh showing it so we have a problem in our hands and this is how we can use this library unfortunately i did not uh find um too much info on the internet so i had to you know to try to find that to come up with something on my own <clears throat> and uh, what i eventually did is that I, let's say, massage this library, this UUID library, 
in order to be able to use it within the browser because the how it is defined as a node module as we know cannot be directly uh, loaded in a browser so I had to convert it to a browser compatible let's say version uh, and then use it from the global namespace because this is another way that WASM bind gen allows us to use libraries. And how did I do this? If I open the readme file, uh, I have all the information here for future reference. Uh, let's go to GitHub. Uh, maybe it's better to check that there. GitHub. GitHub. Uh, this is me. Okay. This is you test. This is what I want to show you. <clears throat> this is uh, this is our case, the multi-level exe modules. And what I did is I built a module with browserify in order to make it compatible for loading in the browser. So these are the steps for achieving this. Now let me I have these files, so let me show you the exact thing. I created this temp.js as you can see. And all I do here is I require the uh, UUID library and then I just attach it to the window object. Of course, you can use a quite unique uh, namespace for to avoid name collisions, etc. You can use multiple, let's say, objects, properties here to attach it. But the, the general essence is that we can attach it to the global window object and then we can use it from there. So I created this, then I used the browserify. So this is how you can use it. Browserify, temp.js, and you can output the library to a file. And this is where I outputted the library, which is in here. So we get this file. In essence, we get all the functionality within a file. And then my next step was to attach it to the index HTML. So this is where we load the library. So we uh, solved kind the first, let's say the first problem within this case of multi import uh, modules, we have a file which is available in our <coughs> um, in our global environment. So if we come now to the application here, you can see that if we where is the console? So here it is. Do I run it? Trunk surf. Okay, now we run it. Now if I type UUID, you see that we have this <coughs> namespace with all its available things. And we can call UUID V4, for example. And we get our UUID. So next step is to attach this, create bindings to the Rust U application. So we have this file and the next thing to do is, as you can see, the functionality comes through the source JS lib UUI DRS uh, file. So let's check that file. This is the bindings. This is the file with the bindings. So as you can see, the previous time we used the module, let's say directive. But now we are using a different directing directive, the JS namespace. As I said, all these are defined here. It's a, if you if you uh, search here, you will find it anyway. 
there is this JS namespace and our namespace is the UUID because if you remember we attached this to the UUID here. So this maps to this. And now we can start defining our functions. I just defined the v4 function as you see here. And this is how we use it again within our components. So we are calling our Rust bindings here with the libuuid module and we are calling this function which maps to the JS library. So this is the function and it maps to control find v4. Yeah, it maps to this. which maps to underscore v3 default, which is, you know, funny. But anyway, the uh, issue is here, the essence of the issue is how we can create bindings to this uh, node module. So it was a two step process. We created a file that could be loaded within the browser and then we are using this JS namespace directive of wast bindgen in order to map to the functions, to the methods uh, that we care about. And we, we come to the final result here. And again, if I reload, you see that it is working. We get new UUIDs on its refresh. And a uh, very nice thing is that we get no undefined, etc. that are a common use case in, uh, in JavaScript. Nulls and undefined and all these horrible JS errors, which I am tired of. So this is in essence the video. This is the info that I wanted to share with you. I will have all these things in the description, uh, the links to the documentation, etc. And to give you an overview, my next step will be to check how I can uh, bind to this JavaScript library, which is the Coliseus library. Uh, I don't know if I pronounced it correctly, but it is used for multiplayer, for mul multiplayer, uh, let's say, action uh, and I want to see how we can uh, use it from within a U, a Rust U application. So when I sort that out, I will create a video to show you the basic steps for doing that. And hopefully uh, you will uh, gain something out of it. So this was the video. Thank you for the support. Uh, for supporting this channel. Thank you for all your comments. I really appreciate them. Until next time, I hope you enjoy your day. Bye.